what do you think will be the future trend here uh, in terms of education in the Philippines? Uh, what do you think will be the prolonged uh, medium here, especially with a lot of schools still going virtual and remote? So what do you think would be the main medium here for parents, students, and teachers? Yeah, so uh, thanks for that, uh, Jess. So number one, uh, here in the Philippines, as you know, the Commission of Higher Education um, uh, made that announcement that flexible learning is here to stay. Uh, and uh, there's a great op opportunity for uh, higher education institutions, uh, not just the colleges and universities, but also uh, K-12, to uh, senior high school, junior high school, to be able to innovate further uh, in terms of the tools and the uh, uh, cloud-based platforms that they use um, um, in, in, in providing these solutions. So number one, I think micro-credentialing or massive open online course um, programs that can be incorporated into their existing curriculums would be, would, would, would be very um, would be very rampant in, in the programs in the edu edu higher education institutions, most especially offering future-ready skills that can be incorporated into uh, curriculums in computer science, information technology, uh, business as well. Uh, second is, as you know, that uh, students nowadays, they don't go to the physical campuses and they don't, they don't go to the physical computer lab facilities. So they don't have an access to those physical computer lab environments that they go to whenever they do their lab classes. So with the use of, uh, let's say, for example, uh, one of our products, Cloud, so a virtual labs platform uh, that, that is actually widely used right now across the Asia Pacific region as well. Uh, institutions and universities actually use that platform in order for us to digitally transform this physical desktop lab hardware into highly accessible anytime, anywhere, virtual lab environments that the students can access at the comfort of their home uh, whenever they're, they're doing their lab classes online. So apart from all of these standard learning management systems and conferencing tools that, you know, the universities and institutions have already invested in since uh, since uh, uh, the pandemic situation happened last year. With the post-pandemic situation happening right now, it becomes a long-term innovative digital transformation journey for them to be able to embrace more tools that actually uh, uh, actually extends and, and, and enhances the experience uh, on learning for the students, not just siloed by them, uh, just be able to access classes and subjects online or courses online, but for them to be able to also um, access uh, lab environments uh, um, uh, with the absence of the physical lab computer facilities, they can access these lab environments and, and, and standardize um, levels the play field for all of the students with these virtual lab environments that are highly scalable and highly accessible by all of the students, regardless of the hardware that they use. But Dan, looking back at the past year since schools went online or virtual when it comes to education here or schooling, uh, how, how do we fare now compared to other countries, especially when it comes to the use of these tools that you have just mentioned? Well, I think uh, the universities nowadays, and even you would be surprised that even K-12 institutions are even much more open into much wider type of use of platforms. like. Um, as we know, since last year, learning management systems become uh, become a mainstream. But now, more and more advanced tools and platforms that are cloud-based applications that actually enables them to in increase these learning experiences becomes even more mainstream as well. Um, apart from uh, the, the the learning management system and other tools, and even you know the use of Zoom or, or Microsoft Teams or or, or or Google Google Classrooms and and whatnot. But apart from that, additional tools such as, you know, these virtual labs platforms, uh, micro-credentialing platforms, uh, massive open online course programs for future-ready skills, those are the things that completes that entire uh, package and, and, and program and solution for, for the institutions. So it's not just about uh, the, the, the learning management systems anymore. Nowadays, the Philippine institutions have started to embrace these tools. You would see a lot of of private institutions using them as well. Um, their knowledge uh, in terms of how innovative that they can be or, or how more innovative that they can be uh, are actually being extended. Uh, so I think I would say we are still at par at the moment as well. Um, uh, our educators are are becoming more creative uh, because, of, because of these um, uh, technologies and these solutions wherein it allows them to also be a master of these tools 
right? Mm-hmm. So it's not just about them creating curriculums and you know, you know, uh, uh, classroom content, but they 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 are able to to become technologists as well and and creators because of these tools that allows them to actually be creative on their craft as as educators. Mm-hmm. So that that reinvents their role as well and responsibility. So that 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 becomes a very interesting factor of how the Philippine-based institutions are embracing this, both K to twelve and higher education.